electronic measuring devices displaying a graphical plot instead of single numerical values are called oscilloscopes. As an advantage of this display mode, the progress of fastly changing voltages can be illustrated. In this video I am using a digital storage oscilloscope model DSO2090, which is connected to a personal computer via an USB interface. Like explained at the video about digital multimeters, the electric properties of the used measurement instruments have always to be considered. The instrument used here has an internal impedance of 1 mega ohm and an input capacitance of 50 picofarad. More details about the electrical specifications and about possible sources of error while doing measurements with oscilloscopes will follow at the second video. At this video I would like to explain the handling of an oscilloscope with the help of different measurements. The electric power is delivered to your residence as an alternating current, a periodically fast changing signal. There are two important reasons not to measure the voltage at a power socket at the wall of your home. In Germany the voltage output of general purpose alternating current is 230 V, which is why there is danger to life when touching blank wires. And furthermore, the maximum input voltage of the used oscilloscope is just 35 volt. The 230 volt coming out of the power plug are reduced with the help of a transformer. The model used here should be very familiar to all model railway owners. The oscilloscope is connected to the output terminals of the transformer by a test lead. Like explained at the second video, the electric properties of this test lead have to be considered too while doing measurements. As soon as the connection is established, a sine wave appears at the computer screen, showing the progress of the attached voltage. The software used here is called Open Huntec, running on SUSE Linux 11.4 with GNOME desktop. How can we read the input values at the displayed curve? The coordinate system of the graph is represented by a dot line printed grid. The base units of those grid are the edges of a single rectangle. The edges are also called divisions. One division is subdivided by five dots, hence one dot equals 0.2 divisions. The value of one division can be read, respectively adjusted, at the accordant field. The vertical axis representing the input voltage is adjusted to 5 volts per division and the horizontal axis representing the time is adjusted to 10 milliseconds per division. The adjustment of the horizontal axis is also called time base. The peak to peak voltage can be read as 6.6 .6 divisions and 6.6 .6 multiplied by 5 volt results in a voltage of 33.0 volts. At the horizontal axis we can read 2.0 divisions for the time of one oscillation, resulting in a time span of 20.0 milliseconds with 10 milliseconds per division. The inverse value of the oscillation time is called the frequency of the sine wave, which is 50 Hz. Two cursors can be placed at two points of the sine wave. The accordant time between the markings is displayed at the bottom of the screen, where we can see the resulting frequency too. Furthermore, the frequency of the attached AC voltage is automatically calculated by the software and we can read a slightly different value of 50.582 Hz. The accuracy of the DSO2090 is 3%, hence the effective time span for one period is somewhere between 19.4 and 20.6 milliseconds. The resulting frequency is between 48.5 and 51.5 Hz. 
the calculated deviation of the measured peak to peak voltage is 0.99V, hence those value is somewhere between 32.0 and 34.0V. The scale reading precision is approximately 0.1 divisions, hence the voltage can be read up to 0.1 multiplied with 5 volts resulting in 0.5 volts and the time can be read up to 0.1 multiplied with 10 milliseconds resulting in 1 millisecond. To improve the reading precision we can adjust the horizontal axis to a lower value. The horizontal axis is also called time base or sweep. Let's choose 4 milliseconds. Hence, we can read 5.0 divisions, which equals 20 milliseconds again. The accuracy is still 3%, but the scale reading precision increases, because half a dot, respectively 0.1 divisions, conforms to just 0.4 milliseconds. Like at digital multimeters, you should choose the smallest range possible to read a value at the display of an oscilloscope. If we decrease the vertical scale down to 2 volts per division, the peaks of the sine curve are out of the adjusted range. The measurement of the AC voltage is automatically repeated. By what we can see the peak to peak voltage increasing as soon as I'm turning the actuator of the transformer. But when does a single measurement start? Well, that's done by the so called trigger of the oscilloscope. Certain conditions of the input signal are defined for the starting point of measurement. In this case, the sine curve starts at the left edge with increasing slope from the middle axis of the screen and it ends at the right edge of the display after 40 milliseconds have passed by. The middle axis corresponds to a voltage input of 0 volt. A new measurement is started as soon as the voltage level reaches 0 volt after dropping below those level. One oscillation is dropped at this kind of adjustment, because at the end of the measurement the voltage input is already slightly above 0 volt and it is still increasing. The trigger gets unlocked as soon as the voltage level drops below 0 volt and finally the measurement starts when those level is reached again. The voltage level at which the oscilloscope starts the measurement can be adjusted to any value. By using this software a small triangle at the right edge of the display has to be moved to the accordant level with the help of the mouse. By adjusting a higher trigger level the measurement doesn't start until this voltage input is reached. The sine curve doesn't start any longer at the middle axis but at a higher value at the left edge of the display. The whole curve is moving slightly to the left. By choosing a negative trigger level, the curve is moving to the right. No measurement is started when adjusting normal behavior and a trigger level which is never reached by the input voltage. While lowering the voltage of the transformer, we can't see any changes at the screen. Not until the voltage output of the transformer increases and the trigger level is reached, the oscilloscope starts further measurements. When switching to auto, a new measurement is triggered after a certain time span, even without reaching the trigger level. As a result of this adjustment, the sine curve starts moving around its horizontal position as long as the trigger level is not reached by the input signal. We can adjust the trigger conditions to increasing or decreasing slope. While choosing decreasing slope, the measurement starts if the input voltage drops below the trigger level after rising above those voltage. Zero volt are adjusted again. 
the sine curve starts at the left edge with negative going voltage. When readjusting increasing slope, the curve starts with the positive going voltage again. The PC oscilloscope features another function. The region of the curve before the measurement is triggered can be displayed too. To do so, we have to move the tiny triangle at the upper edge of the screen to the designated position. Like before, the measurement starts while 0V are reached at positive going voltage, but some values before the trigger event occurred are displayed too. That becomes more clearly if we adjust the time base to a value of 1 millisecond. By now there is no entire period of the sine curve displayed, but we can observe the progression for 5 milliseconds before the measurement was triggered. Let's move the point of triggering some more to the right, so we can observe a larger area of the curve to the left of those point. With the help of the trigger level and the point of triggering, we can observe different areas of the curve progression. The point of 0V at the vertical axis can be adjusted too. Up to now, the middle axis of the screen represented the line of 0V. By sliding the CH1 symbol in vertical direction, those lines can be moved along the Y axis. The position of the sine curve is moving in an accordant way. Let's place the 0V level at the bottom of the display and adjust the Y axis to 2V per division. In doing so, we can observe the positive half of the sine curve with a higher resolution, hence the scale reading precision increases. We get 5.9 divisions for the positive peak and by moving the 0V level to the top of the display, we get 5.7 divisions for the negative peak. We can read the peak to peak voltage with a higher precision. As you can see, the software is automatically calculating the peak value of the negative half and we can read a displayed value of 11.4V. To be able to demonstrate further functionalities of an oscilloscope, I'm replacing the transformer by a function generator. With the help of this board, we can generate nearly any curve progression of the input voltage. The functionality of those electronic is treated at another video. Let's have a look at a sinusoidal curve. As you can see, the voltage generated by the function generator is always above 0.6V, but the shape of the curve is similar to those of the transformer. Those voltage is a superposition of a DC voltage of 1.9V and an AC voltage with a peak to peak voltage of 2.6V. We can fade out the DC voltage fraction with the help of the oscilloscope. For this purpose, the input channel has to be adjusted to AC voltage. Now we can observe the AC fraction of the input voltage. We can switch the vertical adjustment to a lower value of 500mV per division. The peak to peak voltage can be read as 5.0 divisions, which is 2.5V. The DSO2090 is equipped with two input channels, so we can observe two signals simultaneously. We can see two sinusoidal AC voltages. The periodic time of the green curve is twice as much as those of the yellow curve. While two different signals are connected to the input channels of the oscilloscope, each of them can be allocated to one of the coordinate axes. The X axis doesn't represent the time base any longer, but the input value of channel number 2. Those adjustment is called XY mode. The resulting graph of the two sine curves is a horizontally 8.
If the frequency of both signals is identical and if there is no phase shift, the resulting graph is a simple line with an angle of 45 degrees to the X respectively Y axis. More complex figures are the result of a frequency ratio of 2 to 3, 1 to 3, 1 to 4 and so on. Those graphs are called Lisa U curves. Besides the frequency ratio, the phase shift affects the resulting curves too. The frequency ratio is 1 to 2 once again, but the phase shift increases starting from 0. As you can see, the plotted curve alters. So far about the handling of oscilloscopes. The second video will treat sources of error and how to avoid them. Thanks for watching and bye for now.